Now, I know some of you are thinking about buying land, you know, whether it's acreage in the country or a smaller lot inside of a community or an empty plot on the frontier. This video is all about buying land to build a house for investment or even building your dream home. This process can be super rewarding and even profitable. And on the other hand, it can also be a total mess, uh, a, a money pit or a cause of anger, frustration, and possibly even divorce. Um, if this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, I just wanna say welcome aboard. Um, if you're subscribed already, then you already know uh, that there's a ton of super helpful videos here on this channel uh, to help you avoid the pitfalls that are costly. So if you're ready, uh, give me a thumbs up and let's dive right in. So the reason I'm doing this video today is to help you. I've seen it all and um, there are things that you need to know before you buy that land. And of course, there's no way to cover every single scenario in a video, but this is a super solid list of some of the things that you're gonna wanna know. Um, if you've bought land once before, or if you've never done this, trust me when I say this, it's better to learn from someone who has already done this and does this every day. Uh, my team has helped hundreds of people build their dream homes and build homes, whether it's a high-end custom home or a small community home or even something on their own. So if you're even thinking about building a house on land, these are the things that you need to know before buying that land. So uh, let's make sure you watch this entirely to the end because uh, there's a lot of things that you wanna know exactly what to do and what to stay away from as well. Uh, no matter where you live in this nation, uh, there's about 25 steps that you'll need to follow. And there are many things that you need to know um, to get the best results. So let's talk about where do you start. So, you know, location is very important. You always hear about real estate location, 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 right? So the things that you wanna think about before you get started, before you even start to look is, you know, where do you want to be? So if you're looking at a town or a city or even a county, if you have to commute to work, how far are you willing to consider commuting? Because, you know, a lot of the communities are outside of areas where you'll find land. You know, it's more dense in city populations and you can find, find small lots there. But if you're looking for bigger acreage or bigger land, how far do you want to commute? The other thing is, is what's your acceptable drive time? So like, do you wanna be 15 minutes away or a half an hour away drive time? You can think about where things are being built and where they're not being built. Think about what's gonna change in the future. So um, how much grass do you wanna cut? Do you like relaxing and cutting grass or are you looking to get away uh, from all of the chores that are the outside chores? Um, what school districts are important? So think about that. If you have a family, uh, what's the, what else is going on besides the land? You know, can friends walk over to the house uh, or do you have to drive miles to take them to social activities? Uh, how about shopping, you know, grocery shopping, things that we take for advantage of, just take advantage of. Uh, so think about the shopping, uh, grocery shopping, stores, how far away from those are you? Now, obviously everything can't be bought on Amazon, but think about that. Uh, how far if you travel from like restaurants if you ever go out uh, or how far do you want to go uh, if you travel to the airport how far away is that is it hours away is it a long commute do you have to um, you know think about and plan out those things so also what do you want on the land do you want open area okay do you want trees do you want woods do you want privacy do you do you um, do you like a wooded lot? Do you want an open area? Uh, you know, what does it back up to? Now, now, here's an important thing. If it backs up to a nature preserve, think about what that nature preserve is and why it's there. Okay, so, um, and is the whole lot buildable? So if you buy this tract of land or you buy this lot or this land, can you build on the whole thing or is it one part of it elevated and that's the part you build on the rest of it's low land. So just, you gotta look at all these things. How about a large lot for kids? Uh, do, you, do you need large land area for them to play in? Or open grass fields? 
How about air rights? You hear that? Are you in a flight path? Okay. Uh, is there air traffic going by? Or how high can you build if you're in an area where you want to build something? Think about those things. Um, you know, if you're just building a house, that's one thing. But you got to think about if you need room for a pool or if you have um, a garage or if you're, you're into antique vehicles, how far do you need to uh, or how much land do you really need? for that how about your driveway how far back do you have to go because each of these things will add costs so you want to think about this um, I made a list and again I'm going from the list because I couldn't remember all of this at one time so I had to you know put it down on paper so uh, if you're looking for acreage think about the size of the lot now think about this are you looking for acreage a plot or are you looking for land in a subdivision because if you want less yard maintenance, what percentage of it do you want in woods and what percentage of it do you want to cut grass, like around the house? Uh, or, or are you looking for a community that's already developed, you're looking for a parcel in the community that may have a clubhouse or a pool or other social activities, you know, something more upscale uh, or something basic. So think of these things before you start looking at that land. See, not all land will meet every criteria. So um, it's important to think these first steps through so that you can get to the next step. Because once you build a home, it's there. Um, you can't change it unless it's a tiny home on wheels, right? So, um, you know, what is it located close to or what is it located away from? How about the power company? Uh, this land where I am today power company is right there. Do you want to be right next to that land? You know, is do you need to be, you know, think about it. Think about where you're going to be building. How about a swamp? Is it lowland? Does it fill up with water? Looks great today. It's dry. It's a sunny day. But what happens when, when uh, the rains come? Does water always flows to low land, no matter where you live in the nation? It just does. So how about a noisy road? Um, or are they building a road? close by. Now the close by road may be an advantage because you get to actually commute times or get close to things, but think of it also in congestion, okay, if you're trying to get away from that. So the future, you know, or the flight path, like I had mentioned for the airport, where, where is that going? These are the things to consider because uh, another thing to consider is a lake, a pond, on water. If you're thinking about that, do you want to back up to a pond in your backyard? Do you want to go fishing? Um, if you're on a stream, what are your water rights? What, what are those rights? Um, do you want just land or do you want access to something else? So you got to think about where that is. Um, nature Preserve, I had mentioned, and this is one thing that I want you to know because we had a, uh, a client uh, who we were selling a home for who had built their home and this is a pitfall that you don't want they built next to a nature preserve but what they didn't do is their research on what, what why was that a nature preserve the reason it was is because it was a low-lying area and, and water collected in that area what they didn't know was it looked beautiful when they built their home but then when they found out was water actually came up pretty close to their backyard it wasn't in a flood zone it was just a collection area so just do your research or sit next to the smart kid, wherever you are locally, there's somebody who knows these things. So uh, these are things that you want, the pitfalls that you want to avoid. Uh, something else that you want to consider, if it is on a, a lake or pond, where does the land end and where does it start? So in other words, where are your rights to that water? Okay, does it end in the middle of the pond or does it end at the end of the water? Or is it just an easement? In other words, uh, somebody else maintains that area around the pond and you might only get up to one foot and don't actually have access. So these are things to do. Um, do your research, do your homework beforehand. Uh, check the flood maps. Okay, here's a big one. Um, you know, flood maps are good, but they don't answer all these questions. Get the map overlay, see what's in a flood zone X. X is a hundred year zone, okay? So 100 years is, um, you know, floods don't happen in 100 years. Now I can tell you that 
there are areas that I know that are not in a flood zone at all, but yet they, they do collect water. So, you know, somebody in your, if it's an area that you're not familiar with, somebody in your area where you're looking, do that research. Make sure you know this all before the purchase, okay? Um, do the map overlays and also do uh, uh, different times of the day, check out where things are and what's going on. Is there a lot of wildlife or is there uh, something else happening during different times of the day? So how about the intercoastal waterway? Okay, so where are areas we're talking about water now um, or on the beach? Now, believe it or not, here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, we actually have oceanfront lots still available. Yeah, they're, they're not $100,000, guys, but they are still available. We have a lot of land here. We have a lot of different areas, a lot of geography. We're still growing. Some areas are more dense and they're already built out. So wherever you're building, you gotta think these things through because, you know, you could build today, but then what about a year from now or 10 years from now? What's it gonna look like? Just think those things through. Is there gonna be a lot of development? Um, if you want a little farm, for instance, uh, or even a garden, and you have this stream running through your, your property, um, think about who owns the rights to that water. Now, the reason I say this is because do you own it or does someone else own it? For instance, if you had a dam that blocked that water, if, if you did a dam, who owns that water? Or what if there was a beaver that stopped up the water flow um, it, coming into your property and, you, and it builds up and who's responsible? Because, you know, do you want a lawsuit downstream from somebody else that said, hey, I'm not getting my water? Or, and this is a big deal out west, you know, in the western states, because water rights, water is precious, right? Um, it's a commodity. So, you know, you wanna, you wanna do that research and understand who owns that. How about the erosion of land? How about if you do have a stream and there's w water that's taking away land, right? Um, it, it, you're losing dirt, okay? You're actually losing the dirt. So this is a process where it gets dislodged and that dirt ends up going somewhere else as well, okay? And that's called accretion. So you have erosion, which is the ripping away or taking away of land and accretion where it goes somewhere else. So if you have a property that is gaining land, dirt from water or some other way, just or erosion, wind, think about this, because these are things to think about if you're like out in the middle of a desert or out in the middle of the West, right? So um, reliction also is the gradual receding of water. So if you have water lines where there's a lake and they're draining water, you know, are you gaining land because there's, or, or, or a possible uh, a gaining of land because of the draining of water from some reason, from a swamp or something like that. So think about those things as well. Um, there's a lot more that I really wanna share with you um, here. And so far, I just have to ask you this question, is any of this helpful? If it is, please give me a thumbs up, please comment below, because I really wanna know what you're doing, where you live, uh, what's happening with you. So personally, I have bought tracts of land um, and I bought residential lots. Uh, I've had homes built on them and I really got better. Each time I built, I got better. Um, but, you know, my team, my real estate team, I just want to give you these stories so you understand it. Um, they have helped. I've got one realtor who actually builds more than a home or, or more each year. So they've gotten really good with it. And the information that they've learned and knowledge of this helps their clients. So, you know, they've got it down to a science. But I also have one other person on my team uh, a realtor who, who is um, into land, tracks of land uh, development. Their knowledge um, helps many clients there as well. Um, whether it's tracts of land or acreage or homes or lots and that sort of thing, that's what they do. And they know it very well. And they know what to look for and what to stay away from. I'm just sharing some of this with you guys so you go, you know, you, you get a, a good starting point wherever you're living in the nation because there's just a lot of information on the internet that's not actually factual or true. But as a broker in charge, I get to see every transaction that happens everywhere, whether it's with our team or somewhere else. And all I have to say about that is, you know, knowledge and experience really does count because, you know, good moves or bad moves. Um, so let's get into more specifics of land, okay? So has the property been surveyed? So you get a plot or maybe you don't get a plot, 
uh, and, and it actually has a direction or points on the map has been measured as far as how many feet, how many, how many yards, how many acres, right? Does it have the actual dimensions and are they recorded at the courthouse, okay? Because, or was this just on a piece of paper from a hundred years ago that somebody just handed to someone? You know, you need to do that research. I, I bought a piece of property one time um, and it was measured by meets and bounds. Now that's not feet and that's not acres. So they actually measured in different things back then. I also bought another piece of property which was measured in poles and chains, okay? So depending on what state you live in, the old school way that they did it, they surveyed, is different than today, totally different. GPS, I mean, you can stick a pole in the ground and see exactly where it begins and starts and ends. Back in the day, it wasn't that simple. You know, uh, the one parcel of land that I bought, um, it had trees. Now they were big trees, they were probably 100 year old trees at that time, but they're long gone. So the boundaries are not necessarily marked. So we had to go in and we had to resurvey everything uh, because you know, there wasn't any physical boundaries. There weren't any poles in the ground. There weren't any stakes in the ground or anything there. So uh, if, if you need to get a new survey you want, or, or to find out where your boundaries are or even to flag the corners, who's going to pay for that? So just before you buy the land, who's going to do that? I've also subdivided parcels. So here's another thing that I want to tell you about. Um, do you need a for instance, uh, if it's a commercial piece of property, you know, or not, if it's a residential area, do you need an engineer to draw up the plats? And then, so you'd have to take those to the city or the county or the municipality to get approval to subdivide that parcel from another piece? These are things that you need to consider and things that you need to know. Um, I've done this, so I'm just pointing off the things that seem to come up repetitively and, and you may not even know about if you've never done this. Uh, how about this? Deed covenants, meeting, re all right, so if you're buying in a subdivision, um, there's a deed covenants, there's rules, there's restrictions, there's there's that sort of thing. So you wanna get a copy of the meeting minutes, the current budget, are they flush with cash? Are they running out of money if it's in a subdivision in a community? Or um, what are the rules and regs? Can I have a Winnebago, an RV? Can I have a boat? Can I park? Can I store? Can I have a commercial vehicle with lettering on the side of it for my business? These are all things that you need to think about and, and get that before um, you go ahead and get too, too far in. Um, now, if you do get the deed and um, someone's given you an okay to do something, make sure like a fence on your property, is it allowed to have a fence or how high the fence is, make sure you get that in writing. Because if it's verbal, that's one thing, that's great, but in writing it's enforceable. So that's, that's you wanna do that. Um, for instance, if you have an easement, okay, a, a, a property that's connecting, you're landlocked from somebody else, and let's say you own that property, and for 25 years, somebody's been driving through that property, it's been vacant, to get to their property, it's landlocked, and they have an easement. Why? Because they've been doing it for so many years, nobody ever told them not to, okay? But, or are there any um, utility easements to the property, or underground, or, or overhead lines, you know, uh, or future? You know, where are the easements? You wanna know those things. Um, you wanna get the specifics to that parcel and that piece of property. So like sewer and water is very important, obviously, if you're building a home. If you just have a tract of land and you're just gonna use it for recreation, great. But if you're buying it to build on, the water, the sewer that gets directly on that property, you wanna know if there's, if it's the county or the city and there's a piece of land and it's right up to the road, connection fees, okay? Uh, does it run to the road? Does it go to your house? Do you have to pay from the road forward? Is there a connection fee just up to that parcel? You gotta get all this mapped out because I've seen where there's impact fees even, uh, where it was once a rural piece of land and it went into residential and there's an impact fee of like 5,000 or 10,000 or more, just depending on how big, what it is and where. So you need to get that information before you get started. If it's well or septic, okay, here's a good one. Um, do you need to pump? I bought a couple lots one time and um, on those lots, I knew that um, I could put a well and septic in because of the lay of the land. I also knew that there was another lot next door. It was a couple acres, but 
um, that lot I didn't purchase, and the reason I didn't was because I knew that you would need a pump. The place where the house could be put or settled um, was in one area, but in the in the back um, was where you would have to run the septic because it couldn't be so close, so many square feet close to the house. The run, the length that you'd have to run that, plus the elevation where it would have to be placed, would need a pump, which was about 10 grand. So I knew that that parcel was gonna cost someone to develop or to put a house on 10 grand. It actually turned out to them when they did that, someone did buy that parcel eventually, and I built a house on mine, um, but that other one cost them 15,000 to get that done. So just, you wanna know that lay of the land and you wanna know that before. And if you, again, if you have somebody who does this every day, they, they can help guide you with this. Um, because, you know, the further away from things like connections or or pipes or pumps, this is all money. This all costs money. So um, one time I bought 89 acres in, in West Virginia and, it, and we built a cabin, it was overlooking a lake, but, um, where I'm going with this is mineral rights. Who owns the rights under the ground? Do you own that or does someone else own that? Okay, because um, you may wanna check on this because like, can they, can they mine underneath of your property without disturbing your land? I mean, they could go a mile under and, and, and who owns that? But what if, what if you found gold on your property, right? Who owns the rights to that? Or platinum or something else crazy, right? So um, gas rights you know, uh, uh, other things like that. You just wanna know, and if you buy a piece of property, try to get all of this up front. Um, again, electric lines, gas lines, can they put, can they come through and put that through? You wanna learn all this sort of thing. The air rights, we talked about that. How about restrictions from the county? What you're allowed to do or not allowed to do on that parcel? If it's a subdivision, uh, again, you wanna make sure that you know all these things before you get involved. Uh, what restrictions are allowed? Uh, can you, what are, are there square footage minimums? Uh, are there, are there, you know, can you put a barn up? Can you do these things? This is the stuff you want to know beforehand. You want to learn the zoning. You want to learn the county rules uh, or, or square footage minimums and the construction. Like what can you build out of and, and what can you not build out of? What materials can you use um, and what is allowed? We've had some people who want to buy and build tiny homes, but they're restricted. A lot of times there's a square footage minimum or you have people who have inquired and want to buy, um, do container houses where they stack containers on. You might be able to do that in some areas, but other areas you just can't do that. Uh, do you want to farm or, or do you want to open rural area? You know, can you, what can you do and what can't you do? The county, the city, wherever your municipality is, you want to learn those things beforehand. So town rules, I'm going to give you a little clue or a heads up here. Here's a golden nugget. Go to municodes.org, muni, M-U-N-I, like municipal, municodes.org. You can check out um, plans on there. If you type in your keywords on what you plan to do with that property and see if they come up and then you'll learn what the restrictions are. And this is anywhere in the nation, you can use that tool. Uh, so acquisition, here's a big one is how you're paying, okay? So it's a process, it doesn't just happen overnight, but if you're paying cash, great, we know where that's coming from. But if you're financing, or if you're owner financing, um, a hand, or, or which banks will loan on land, because it's not like a, a house is already there, so you can't just walk into the bank and get a loan for land all the time. There's a lot of restrictions to that. So you wanna know which ones uh, will loan on land. Here locally in Myrtle Beach, if you are buying in the area, we can give you those uh, resources to tell you where to go and, and what to stay away from. But I'm gonna tell you that um, when you do this, you wanna make sure that, because you can compare rates and that sort of thing, you can't just walk into a bank and want a land loan. Most, most banks don't loan money on land. They'll, they'll loan on a house with land, but not on a land loan as a conventional mortgage. So just know this before you get started. Um, if you're paying cash, you wanna make sure about the liens on the property. You know, are there any mechanics liens or, or otherwise? And do a title search, of course. Uh, the title search, even if you're building, because if you're building your dream home and, and someone lays claim to your property and you've got your palace there, you want to make sure that nobody else is jumping in and trying to say, you know, get off my land or I've got claim to this or I've got um, some other uh, a lien against that you owe me money for. So make sure you do that research. Um, you can get a construction loan to perm loan. So what that means is 
you you can if you own your land you go to the bank and you can get a loan for the construction part of it the the building the, the money that you'll need to build and then it turns into a permanent loan so you're not doing two closings that's a little shortcut that'll save you a little bit of uh, extra closing costs for the second loan so construction slash perm after you own the land you can do that so how do you find land okay um, not all land is listed on the internet you know you can look around on the internet and you can see that sort of stuff but um, there's a lot of things that I know that are not listed and and a lot of other companies that I know which we work together that's not listed and these are called pocket listings and sometimes we even know developers who own these parcels of land where somebody comes to us and says hey um, we're looking to do yada 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 well let's consider these things and you aren't gonna find that stuff on the internet so um, if you're trying to do it the old-fashioned way you might find some of this stuff available but you probably won't find all of it available so I want to give you that uh, sometimes you're going to put a lot of energy and effort into finding the right piece of land. Okay. So sometimes it takes time, but it's all worth it in the end. And you know, if you're looking in the coastal Carolina area, just give us a call. We can help you with that. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, please do share this with somebody, you know, who could use it. Um, if you've scri subscribed already, you know, there's a lot of super helpful videos here on this channel. Um, I hope you subscribe. Um, I hope you appreciate all these because I appreciate you watching and commenting as well. And um, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a great day. Um, and if you are doing a land purchase, I hope you have huge success with that land purchase. I know this was a long video today. Uh, a lot of information. Again, still not all the information is in there. So I uh, wish you success with your land purchase, your palace, your build, your acreage, your parcels, your lots, whatever it may be and wherever you are. Take care, guys.